All right, what's up guys, it's Jake. In this documentary, Oliver and I are gonna be talking about Hawaiian immigration to the United States. And I mean, it's not really a topic that many people know or think about too much. And to prove it to you, uh, I asked my good friend, Tony, who's very knowledgeable about certain things, uh, if he knew anything about Hawaiian immigration. And he said he did not know. So I, I, I can conclude that is a topic that not many people know too much about. So before we get to the details, here's a brief summary of how the U.S. came in contact with Hawaii. In 1893, Hawaii was declared a republic of the U.S. with no voting rights. After the forceful removal of Queen Lili Uukalani from power. From 1893 onward, there have been periods of immigration driven by a variety of factors, as seen here on Oliver's graph. From 1900 to the 1920s, Hawaiian immigration saw an, an initial decrease, but then a subtle increase, as Oliver will talk about a little bit more. The 1900s saw the expansion of what is now Hawaii's largest industry, tourism. The first hotel on the island, the Moana Hotel, was opened in 1901. It quickly became a popular vacation destination for wealthy travelers. In the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco, Hawaii was promoted as an exotic and desirable tourist destination, which significantly aided in the industry's development. This could be a reason why migration decreased from 1910 to 1920, as tourism significantly aided in Hawaii's economy, which in turn allowed many natives to financially prosper and incentivize them to stay on the island. However, as we will discuss later, the development of land for tourism sector led to skyrocketing housing costs, which forced many natives out of Hawaii. The late 1910s also saw the American entrance into World War I. Many Hawaiians were dra either drafted or volunteered to serve in the armed forces, which brought them to the mainland for development or training. Although many decided to return to the, their native islands after the war, many also decided to stay on the mainland, either to continue serving in the military or to take advantage of the significant economic and educational opportunities. During the 1920s, there were two main factors that are worth discussing. The first being the Immigration Act of 1924. And this basically set quotas on many different groups coming to the United States, uh, one of which being Hawaiians. And uh, this caused a decrease in uh, Hawaiian immigration. However, there was also uh, sugar plantations in Hawaii at this time, and they, they, were, they were not doing well uh, during the 1920s. So many Hawaiians needed an alternative to keep their uh, economic prosperity going. So this was a push factor that led many of them to, coming, to come to the U.S. So ultimately, during this period of time in the 1920s, there was a net increase in migration. Although we are missing data from 1940, 1950, and 1960, we can look at the overall trend for the four decades. From 1930 to 1970, Native Hawaiian migration to the mainland overall went down. There are many reasons, as we will explore. So the first of these factors uh, in 1930 that sort of led to the decrease in Hawaiian immigration to the United States was the Great Depression. And the Great Depression um, had had widespread effect, effects uh, across the world, really. And for Hawaii specifically, uh, with the sugar plantations, which were already a problem in the 1920s, uh, the Great Depression made this a lot worse, decreased the demand for sugar uh, on the mainland uh, on the, for the Hawaii uh, sugar plantations. So this overall made the situation worse for many of the Hawaiians and uh, decentivized them. Uh, and basically they didn't have enough money at that point in, to travel because of this economic downturn caused by the Great Depression. The importance of the Pacific theater in World War II may have led the war to have the opposite effect on native Hawaiian migration as World War I. While still many Hawaiians volunteered or were drafted into the war effort, the importance 
of Hawaii as a military outpost in the Pacific led to much development on the islands. This led um, many native Hawaiians to stay on the islands in order to work the construction and other military projects. Even if they wanted to leave, however, it was unlikely that they could. After Pearl Harbor, all the islands were set under lockdown and no one was allowed to leave or enter, even tourists, who some of them were stuck on the islands for a significant period of time. Yet, after the lockdown was lifted, it, Hawaii was still under martial law. There were strict curfews and other restrictions placed on the islands and its inhabitants, and still so, it was unlikely that Hawaiians could leave. Another reason for the decrease in migration could have been statehood. After Hawaii gained statehood in 1959, Pan American became the first airline to operate a jet flight to Hawaii. The introduction of airliners to Hawaii caused a massive influx of tourism. Before, it was regarded as a tourist destination for the rich, but the introduction of the airliner opened the exotic islands up to the middle class. Statehood also saw Hawaii expand in other industries, notably the light industry and a diversification of agriculture. The immense economic growth provided by many these many opportunities for Native Hawaiians led to many of them staying. From 1970 to 1980, the native Hawaiian population on the islands rose faster than it on the mainland. This could have been caused by an increased cultural pride in the Hawaiian sovereignty movement, a desire to preserve and reclaim Hawaiian traditions, language, and land rights. The pride could have influenced some Hawaiians' decision to stay on the island. Additionally, the increased pride could have influenced more people choosing to identify themselves as native Hawaiian especially on the main islands, which would explain the large increase of the native Hawaiian population as a whole. Lastly, the early 1970s saw a construction and real estate boom in Hawaii, which although it was good for the economy, eventually contributed to the rising cost of living in Hawaii. So yeah, as Oliver has mentioned, the uh, increasing cost of living in Hawaii has become a major issue for native Hawaiians as it is pushing them out of their homelands and this has started to sort of reverse the trend we see from 1930 to 1970s of decreasing Hawaiian immigration, because now it's sort of pushing them out of their homeland. So it's increasing Hawaiian immigration to the United States. And this is a, a thing that we should probably look for in the future and, and continue to study uh, as this trend continues.